today's project diary is a cook along with me where I attempt to make a quarantine chunky pasta dish using things that I've grown or have around the house. Hi guys, welcome to Kitchen Diaries. Now I wasn't going to do this today, as you can tell by the state of the kitchen, but so many people have asked me to do recipes to carry on this six week challenge. So I'm going to do it today, but obviously I haven't been shopping, so I'm just going to do it out of things that I've either got out of the garden or some staples that I've got in the cupboard. And uh, so I'm going to think, I think I'm going to make some kind of bolognese today. I've got some red lentils as a, a protein replacement, and I've got loads of, little, uh, loads of lovely veg, some herbs, loads of tomatoes, because it's perfect time of year for these. Um, and tomatoes go really well with basil and vice versa. A red onion, uh, because the uh, the white onions tend to hurt my stomach a little bit more, so the red onion is a little, a little bit more gentle and less acidic. But we're gonna carry on today and go through and see if we can make this bolognese. Now it's not gonna be a traditional bolognese, so anyone from Italy, please don't hate me in the comments. I'm just doing what I can out of the ingredients that I've got. So let's crack on and see what happens. So I'm going to start off cutting the onion because I want to reduce this down and cook out the acidity. Now you can cut this however you want so don't let me tell you how to do it. But the reason why I'm using a red onion today is because they're full of manganese, phosphorus, potassium and fibre. They also contain protein which most people don't realise are actually in vegetables. Folates, vitamin C, vitamin B1, B6, a complex vitamin called biotin. This actually helps you convert food into energy. It also contains iron and copper. Adding this vegetable into your diet can also help reduce cardiovascular disease, it can dissolve blood clots, it's a fantastic anti-inflammatory, it reduces blood pressure, it helps you fight against infections, it aids in good lung and heart health and so much more. You can also see that I don't have any professional knife skills, I'm just being really careful not to cut my fingers, I suggest you do the same. Now I'm deciding to cut these into really small pieces, this helps it really break down a lot quicker and cook a lot faster. But like I say, if you want to keep this onion chunky and you love the taste of it, then just cut it however you want. Try not to make it complicated at this point. I'm then going to use a yellow bell pepper. I find these a lot easier on my stomach than the red and green ones. Now it's really easy to grow these. Just take the seeds out and dry them. They also contain loads of manganese, phosphorus, potassium, fiber, protein, folates, calcium, zinc, choline, Vitamin B1, 2, 3, 5 and 6, Vitamin A, C, E and K, Selenium, Lycopene in the red peppers and iron. Bell peppers are a powerhouse for nutrients so definitely get loads of these in your diet. The benefits of eating bell peppers boost your iron absorption, that's basically with the Vitamin C and the iron. And if you saw my nutrition video you'll know that I'm anemic at the moment so this really helps with that. It promotes good eye health, it's a fantastic anti-inflammatory, it's a good prevention for many cancers and it can increase your metabolism. Just eating more whole foods, especially onions and peppers, has shown a significant improvement in my health. And again, you can cut these however you want. I'm just doing these in really long strips and cutting them really fine, the same as the onions, just so they reduce and cook a lot quicker. But if you want to use really big chunks and you love it like that, then do it. It's really no problem at all. Cooking really doesn't have to be complex, but the preparation does take a little bit of time. So just be patient, maybe put some music on and just chill out. The health benefits and the overall feel good factor of making your own food is definitely worth investing a bit of time in. Oh, and one little tip that I forgot to do at the beginning of this is boil the kettle. Have some boiled water on standby and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm not using any oil, so I'm just gonna put, uh, put this in dry. So I'm just gonna put this on a real medium heat. I'm not gonna go crazy on this one today. So the reason why I'm getting these in early is because um, these still irritate my stomach a little bit. So I want to cook these down as much as possible. So I'm just going to put all of those in as is and get those cooking down straight away while I prepare the other stuff. So now that's in. So what I'm going to do is I've got cherry tomatoes in here today. Now I'm using cherry tomatoes because they don't have as much water as the other tomatoes that I'm going to use. So if you're going to make like a pasta sauce, Use the plum tomatoes because you'll get that more richer tomatoey flavour rather than the kind of watery stuff that you get with the others. So I'm going to fill this container up completely. Then I'm going to put the cap on. I'm going to come in for a close up. Now I absolutely love using these bullets. If you haven't got one, I definitely recommend you getting one for your kitchen. I'll leave some links in the description box below. Now I use these for smoothies and pasta sauces and so many things. So they're definitely handy having around the kitchen and they make life so quick and simple. So once that's done, I basically want to put in um, a load of basil because I love this. So 
If you haven't seen the video already, uh, put the link on the screen now. You can grow your own for infinity and beyond. So we're just going to put in loads of this as is. So all you need to do is get the greener stems there and then just put them in water and they'll root really easy. So you can grow any kind of herbs. Some are perennials, some are annuals. But just get them in there. And these really complement the, uh, the tomato flavors. And they're incredible companion plants as well. I'll tell you what I'm also going to do. I'm going to put in a couple of cloves of garlic. Maybe three. Yeah, let's do that. Just strip them off and put them straight in. There's no problem there at all. And then I'm just going to put that back on. Now I'm going to season it later. You can put seasoning in if you want. I'm also avoiding um, salt. So you can use a, a, a sodium replacement by putting celery or something in it. It's up to you, but I haven't got any in the uh, in the cupboard at the minute because I'm struggling to get decent supplies. Now I've already covered garlic in so many other videos, but they really boost your immune system. They're packed full of antioxidants. They detoxify the body, promote good heart health, improves cholesterol levels, reduces blood pressure, and increase your bone health. That'll do. Nice little bit blitz up. So let's give this a bit of a stir. Let's see what's going on here. This over here. Give that a flip. Oh, the smells that are coming off that already is insane. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a bit of seasoning in, just a bit of cracked black pepper. Put in a lot of that because this isn't bad for you, but the sodium is. So we're going to put that in there. I'm also going to add some turmeric. Now this is a wonder powder. This will do so much for your health. I try and eat this in as many meals as possible. Just sneak it in. Now I'm going to use maybe two teaspoons. This is incredible stuff. This is so it's packed full of antioxidants and it's going to keep you so healthy. If you want to have a look in there. Now turmeric contains curcumin, which is a natural anti-inflammatory. It also has really powerful medicinal properties. It can also reduce the risk of heart attack. And as you know, I had one of these a few years ago, so I don't want one of them again. And it's really good for boosting brain function. Just don't overdo it if you have bad kidneys. So if you're not using oil and you find your vegetables are sticking to the bottom of the pan, just add a little bit of water. I've also added a vegetable stock cube. Now you can add whatever one you want, whether it's the gel or the powder, uh, bouillon I think it's called. That's really good. So you just add a little bit of water and that brings the stock into the vegetables at this stage. But just look at the colours of this dish. I've barely added any of the ingredients and already my mouth is watering. This looks so good. So I'm just going to boil the kettle again and then I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. Now all the vegetable stocks are really starting to absorb into these vegetables. So I'm not going to add too much water at this stage. I'm just going to add enough because I'm about to add the lentils and they will soak up loads of this water. So I'm just going to let it sit really nicely and then just steam away until I get the other vegetables and the other ingredients ready. But this is looking so good already. Just look at the colours. <laughs> Let's do this. I hope you're doing this as well at home and enjoying watching this video as I go along. But let's move on to the next. So once you've done that, you've already fried the onions and the peppers and you've had the turmeric and uh, the seasoning to your taste. Uh, I've also added a bit more water in there. So now it's gone from a fry into a boil. So I'm now gonna add the red lentils. So I'm gonna get these also in as soon as possible because these take around sort of 15, 20 minutes, maybe 22 minutes to cook. So we're just gonna get all of those in there. Now I've pre-washed these and I've got rid of all the sediment. They've been sitting there for a while. It's so hot today. Everything's drying out. We're just going to get these in anyway. Put those over the side. So I'm just going to mix these in. And if it dries out, then we're going to add a little bit more water as it goes because the lentils will soak up a lot of this water too. We're just going to make sure that all the lentils are covered. You can also give it a little flip. bit more confidence. That's looking really good. Right, on to the next. So as you can see, it's starting to dry out a little bit. So definitely keep an eye on there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water from the kettle, just to let that soak up in the lentils there. But the smells in the kitchen are overwhelming. It is so good. And the coloration, you just gotta eat the rainbow basically. And the colors in here are fantastic already. Reds, orange, yellows. We're gonna get some more 
get some more red in there. So I'm going to get some more tomato puree. If you want to learn how to make this, I'll do another video. But we're going to get this in there. Maybe a tablespoon. Now I will put the um, recipe in the description box below. I'm just going to get that in there quick. And stir that in. Mm -mm 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 gives you that lovely red red colour that you need. I'm also going to stick the sauce in as well. Now obviously there's no colours or preservatives or anything in there, it's just natural tomatoes like you've seen me make. Now don't worry if your pasta sauce isn't bright red at this stage, once it's all mixed in the redness out of the tomato puree will come out and there will be way more coloration coming in once I've really given it a nice stir here. So we're just going to make sure we get all that puree mixed in. So now that's done, I don't want this getting over my lovely white t-shirt, so I'm just going to stick a lid on and let it flip away on a medium while I carry on and do the rest. After a few minutes later, the big reveal, as you can see the redness is really coming into this now and it's starting to look like a normal pasta sauce. So once that's done, I'm also, it's unfortunate I didn't have enough herbs this year so I've got some oregano and it's dry, I wouldn't usually use this but I want to boost the flavours a bit more. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of that in there, give it some extra flavour and I'm also going to do the completely untraditional thing, I do love a bit of spice and I love the smoky flavour of this chipotle so I'm getting get all of that in there because that is, that's my Achilles heel, it gets me every time. So that. It's gonna just, it's gonna give you incredible flavors and I cannot wait to get my face into this. So it's now the time to do the pasta. Now I've got quite a few bits and pieces laying around the house but I thought I'm gonna use the nest today. Now a lot of people seem to be really scared of carbs. Don't be. What you should do is try and eliminate the white carbs like the processed and the sugary carbs. These are more like your, your beige and brown carbs. These are okay to have in small amounts but it's the green carbs you just wanna eat and eat and eat. There's really no problems with those kind of carbs. So all of these, I can't eat any carbs whatsoever. You really need to know there's three different types of carbs. So these you want to go easy on. If you're trying to put weight on and eat more pasta, oh, nearly lost it. <laughs> if, if you're trying to lose weight, um, then uh, don't eat as much pasta. But if you want to put weight on, then go for a bit more pasta. It's completely up to you. But for me, I'm going to do a bit in between. So I'm going to do three nests per person and I'm cooking two for today. So I'm going to put those in there and then I'm just going to fill it up with the boiling water from the kettle. Doing it this way really cuts down on the cooking time as the water's already boiled so you don't need to waste loads of electricity waiting for the cold water to get warm and it starts the cooking process straight away so I'm just going to put that in there and then put the lid on because this will help it cook even quicker. So I'm just going to leave that on and that takes about 12 minutes and then that, I'm now just going to prepare the, the mushrooms and the courgettes or zucchini. So again with these you can cut them in any shape or size that you want. Now these do help with weight loss but I'm trying to put weight on but these do enhance your digestive system. They're really good at maintaining a healthy heart, they help lower cholesterol, they prevent arthritis pain, they can slow down aging and they really help with your thyroid function. So once I've cut them into little coin shapes I'm going to cut them in half and then in half again into little triangles because I kind of like Trivial Pursuits. It's like the cheeses from there or the pie pieces. What do you call them? Cheese or pie pieces? Let me know in the comment below. <laughs> now these do cook really quickly and I want to keep them crunchy. But any of these pieces, put in the compost bin that you should have in your kitchen already. Wowzers. I'm just going to give that a quick stir, make sure there's enough water in there. It looks perfect so I don't think I need to add any more to that. And then I'm just going to add the courgettes in there. Then we're going to move on and get some of the mushrooms in there. One of the only vegetables where you can get vitamin D, so it's good to just get outside. This helps your nerves, this helps your muscles. Now I've never really been a big fan of mushrooms, but I was eating the wrong ones. So there's so many different types and varieties. Just look around to try and find the one that suits your taste buds better. Now these will look like they're going to take up a lot of room in the pan but these will reduce down by at least half uh, so don't worry about that at all. Um, so I tried to make these a bit more chunky than I normally would because again they will reduce down so don't worry about making them really thick. 
Also, depending on the variety of mushroom, you can really get a meaty texture out of these, so they're great for a meat replacement. Obviously, they'll just give the texture and they won't pack as much protein as meat, but that's what the red lentils are for. So I'm just going to put these in the pan now. Now obviously these are going to reduce down in size, so if it overfills don't worry about it, but we're doing quite well in this really big pan. Beautiful. That'll do. Next ingredient are the tomatoes. Now I'm putting these in as more sort of chunky flavour. There's plenty in the tomato puree and the sauce already, but I just want to give these a bit more texture. So again, cut them in whatever shape you want. I'm just going to cut them in quarters. And if you're adding cherry tomatoes, I'd probably put them in whole, but just pierce to the skin slightly. Now, if you haven't tried growing tomatoes already, why not? These are so easy to grow. You can just grow them anywhere you want, whether you've got a big garden or a balcony or anything like that. You just, just get involved and grow your own tomatoes because shop brought just won't taste the same. There's something about growing these at home that are just making them amazing for different dishes. The flavor is incredible. And as you can see on the screen, they are packed full of nutrients and so good for your health. An incredible variety from anything from helping your blood pressure, full of antioxidants, good heart function, they improve your vision and heart health, they reduce the risk of heart disease, they help prevent many cancers, they lower the risk of stroke and diabetes, they're really good for digestion and prevention of asthma, and many, many more. So if you look at the sauce now, it's starting to get that slightly matte feel to it so what you want to do is really utilize this um, spaghetti spaghetti water this will give you a really silky more starchiness that you need to boost this up a little bit more so just get a couple of ladles in there not too much you don't want to overdo it and also you don't want your spaghetti to dry we're just going to get that in there and that's going to give it that really glossy silky vibe So one of the last things you want to do is get yourself a box grater. Now I'm going to leave the skins on these carrots. I don't mind the earthy flavour from this, plus it's going to be an extra bit of roughage. And all I'm going to do is grate them on the biggest setting. Now I try to use carrots in most of my recipes because they're really beneficial. As you can see here, they're packed full of nutrients. And again, like tomatoes, they help with so many different health problems. Now in these troubling times, it's really good to boost your immune system, so these are really good for that. They're also rich in antioxidants, they're really good at lowering blood pressure and regulating blood sugar levels. They're also really good at lowering the risk of leukemia, and they've also been said to help lower the risk of lung and colorectal cancers. And also adding these and loads of other fruits and vegetables into my diet, I've already seen just in a matter of a couple of weeks that my eyesight's better, my mood's better, my sleep's really improved, my insomnia has virtually gone at the moment, and my overall health has improved just from this six week challenge, and I'm only halfway through. So if you've had these results, please leave a comment below and let me know how you're getting on with this. It's been absolutely life changing, and I'm so glad that I'm now looking into the nutrition value of all the things that I've been helping you grow over the years. And it's amazing, it's a fantastic thing to learn, and hopefully you guys are learning along with me. So I'm just trying to rattle through these as quickly as possible. Don't forget to add the carrot tops to your compost as well. It's really beneficial. It's gonna add loads of nutrients back into your soil. And here, as you can see, there's loads of carrots here. So this is enough, and they will literally take maybe two or three minutes to cook down. And uh, you just kind of want to leave as many nutrients in these as possible. Because you've grated it, it's gonna cook really quickly. So all you need to do is just stir that in, and we're good to go. So the spaghetti's ready, but the pasta sauce isn't yet. So what you want to do is just take it off the heat and leave the water in it. Don't strain, uh, don't strain the water off yet, because that starchy water will stop the spaghetti sticking together. So we're just going to leave that there and allow this reduce down a bit more. So I'm just going to give this a stir. This is a little bit slow. I'm not sure why. I'm hoping this rings all right, but I'm not sure. Um, but we're just going to give that a stir, and then actually just thought. There's one more ingredient that I'm just going to add because I'm trying to pack as much nutrients and as many vegetables in this as possible. I just remembered uh, I'm going to use some frozen peas that I've got in the freezer. Don't worry about using fr frozen stuff. It's just as nutritious, if not even more, because if you're getting them from abroad, 
you're losing the nutrients in the amount of time that it's taking to get to your plate. So frozen is always packed on site and at the freshest point where the vegetables are. So I'm just gonna get some frozen peas, I'll be right back. Just gonna lift this baby up and pack it full of nutrition. Now these are really full of amazing things, loads of protein as well. Just gonna put a handful in or so. That's if it'll come out of the bag. Come on. You can tell I'm not exactly the cleanest chef in the kitchen. <laughs> That'll do, because that's all it seems to want to come out today. Give those a little bit of a stir in, let them melt down. Now they're only going to take about four minutes, but that just gives you that extra bit of protein that everyone seems to be fascinated about, saying that you can't really get it on a whole food plant-based diet. I love that stir. I'm going to give it a taste actually. Let's give it a go. Check for seasoning. Wow. Mmm. The little hum of chipotle. Really good. Let me try. Um, yeah, it needs a bit more pepper. Really do it as I go. A load of that in there. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness, that has just kicked in my taste buds and I am so hungry now. Let's get this going on. Got a mix, another taste. Mmm, really good. Right, let's dish it up. So, I'm just gonna use this bowl here. Get this little spaghetti tool. Get that going. So you wanna keep the water in there to stop it from going Give it a little, that'll stop it going mad. So we just want to give it a turn around in there and that'll loosen it all up again. Because for some reason, that electric hob stopped working halfway through the cooking. Seems to be cursed for doing kitchen and diaries. So we're just going to serve up half of that there. I'm going to keep a little bit of the starchy water in there too. And some of this lovely thing. Cool, look at that. You may also find that when you're eating a nutritiously packed meal like this, you won't feel tired afterwards. You'll be full of energy, you shouldn't feel bloated or any stomach problems like I used to have. And I'm always ready to roll and I could just eat and eat and eat this. It's so good. I've also found that I can go back for seconds. Even though that my stomach tells me I'm full, I can actually eat a bit more. And obviously I'm trying to put weight on, so it's really good to go back for a second portion as well. But I will give a full breakdown of the nutrition value uh, at the end of the video. That'll do. That'll do. Nice. That so messy. So, now I've made it Instagram ready. Now this has been such a rush today guys, I'm making this completely off the cuff. I had no intention of making this, I had no idea what I was going to do, I've never done this before. So the big taste test, so the first thing I want to do is add some of this. Now like I say, this is a cheese replacement, it's packed full of B12, it's amazing. It may take you a while to get used to the flavour, so if you don't like the sprinkles on the top, you can always mix it into the food once you've done that. So I'm going to give that a nice good sample in there. And then, the big one, here we go. What's it gonna taste like? That is Instagram ready. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm really nervous, <laughs> this might be horrible. <laughs> here we go. Mm. That's not bad. That's not the best one I've made, but that's really nice. Oh, really flavors. Mm. The chipotle's in there. You can really taste all the tomatoes. Everything's really good. Mm. Those lentils are perfect as well. Well, like I say, once that pepper's reduced down and the onion's reduced down, I have no problems digesting it as well. So this is really nice. I like it a lot. There you go. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know how you're getting on with your six week uh, whole food plant based challenge. I did get it down my t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys, I'll see you soon. So I've put all the ingredients into Chronometer to give you a rough idea of all the nutrients that are in this. But it is just an estimate because I've noticed they really don't track enough vitamins and minerals for vegetables. So this is the list per portion and as you can see it's 693 calories. 
Just this meal alone gives you 79% of your fiber and 92% of your iron. So this is definitely gonna help my anemia, especially as I've got 207% vitamin C, which helps you absorb the iron quicker. There's not much calcium in this meal, but I did fix that with my breakfast and lunch. If you wanna see a what I eat in a day video, leave a comment below. This meal also contains over the daily dose of my vitamin A, my vitamin B12, and incredible amounts of folate. You can also see I'm hitting over my daily dose of all of my B vitamins and a nice level of vitamin K. With only 4.3 grams of fat, this meal is fantastic if you wanna lose weight. It's got great levels of copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. And as you can see, it's got 44 grams of protein. So this is fantastic if you wanna build muscle. But remember, this is just one meal in the day and I'm already hitting a lot of my daily targets. And also a special thank you for Danny for doing the last minute camera work today. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you've tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.